Pizza here. Come get your free pizza slices. All right, next up, we're tackling SQL injection. We've got three challenges on the list login admin, login vendor, and Christmas special. Any guesses on what they might be about before we start breaking things? Out of my way. I don't know if I can hold this. Login admin sounds easy. Probably just guessing a weak password, right? Dude, seriously, watch out. This smoothie is coming out faster than I can run. Or maybe it's one of those sites where admin admin just works. If I type admin admin, will it log me into the bathroom? Hee hee hee. Good one, Mr. Poopy Pants. What about login vendor? What about it? Did you get everything on if the I list? If I don't find this bathroom fast, yeah. I'm going to be bending but over the closest bucket. Money? And trust me, nobody of wants the I kind can. of SQL injection. Your brother is so weird. I'm not even going to bother asking about the Christmas special. Let's just dive right in. Wait, did you guys get everything I asked for? Yeah, got everything except for my brother's dignity. And based on his situation, I don't think we're getting that back anytime soon. Hey, that's not funny, guys. I can still hear you. Just like Armand, always finding a way to interrupt our progress. It's okay, he can catch up when he gets back. For now, let's head over to the juice shop scoreboard and take a look at what we're up against. A junior? What about the list? What was it even for? Oh yeah, the list. Those were for Mags. Really? She asked me to pick up a few things from Dude. the store for dinner tonight. Is he being serious right now? So anyway, let's bring up the juice shop in your browser, take a look at the scoreboard, and see what we're up against. The first challenge we're going to tackle is the login admin challenge. The goal of this challenge is to bypass authentication and log in as an admin without actually knowing the credentials. That means we're going to be testing for SQL injection vulnerabilities in the login form. If the system isn't sanitizing user input properly, we might be able to trick it into letting us in with just a cleverly crafted input. And, as always, we'll be using our good friend Burp Suite to help with some of the heavy lifting. Time to see just how secure, or insecure, this login system really is. You know, at this point, we should send the juice shop a thank you card for all the free lessons in bad security. Forget a card. We should send them a bill for all the pen testing work we're doing. Well guys, don't forget it's an intentionally vulnerable app. It wouldn't be much fun if everything was locked down properly now, would it? Yeah, but at this point, I feel like they went out of their way to make extra bad security decisions. That makes it even better for us. All of their bad decisions will become our ethical hacking playground. Now let's get to work on breaking into this admin account by bringing up Burp Suite and a browser side by side. For this challenge, we'll be using both Intercept and Repeater. Intercept will help us catch the login request in real time, letting us modify and play around with the data before sending it back to the server. Once we've got the request in hand, we'll send it over to Repeater, where we can repeatedly tweak and test different payloads to see if we can find that perfect injection. It's like playing a game of cat and mouse with the app. Oh, so it's a full-on assault on this login form. I like it. So, browse to the login section of the juice shop, then turn on Intercept in Burp Suite. Now, enter admin admin for both the username and password, then click on login. If this works as expected, you should now see the post request intercepted by Burp Suite. This is where you could start analyzing the request and injecting our payload. But before we do that, let's send this request to repeater now so we can tweak the request in real time to find the right payload. And now that we're here, let's quickly confirm that admin admin doesn't work by sending the request through repeater. Okay, confirmed. Now what should we put in the username field? Well, since we know admin admin isn't going to work, a great place to start is with our old friend, or one equals one. So let's put single quote, or one equals one hashtag into the username field, leave the password alone, and forward the request through. Hey, that didn't work like I expected. We got some kind of SQLite error message. 
And if you look at the juice shop, it says we just solved an error handling challenge. Looks like the database is a little more strict than we thought. Maybe the app's been patched more than we guessed. Not exactly. SQLite doesn't recognize hashtag as a comment. Instead, let's try using or one equals one, but replace hashtag with hyphen hyphen. Also, that error message itself is a huge red flag as it's basically the app telling us it's vulnerable. A properly secured server wouldn't be this chatty about its issues. This is exactly why we got the error handling challenge message, because exposing internal errors like this is a major security flaw. By the way, it looks like the new payload worked. Now we're in as an admin, just like that. That's honestly kind of scary. If a real app were this vulnerable, someone could just waltz in and do whatever they wanted. You took the words right out of my mouth. This is why SQL injection is such a big deal. Once you have access, you're not just logging in, you're potentially exposing user data, modifying accounts, or even taking over the entire system. But before we wrap this up, there's one more thing. We may have completed the challenge, but we're still not in. So let's hop back over to Intercept then tweak the request to include our working injection payload. After that, just forward it through Intercept then walk through the front door like we totally belong here. Dude. I don't know what was in that smoothie, but it went through me faster than an unpatched SQL query. Talk about real-life SQL injection. Hey, look who it is. So glad you can rejoin us Armand my boy, you're just in time for the next challenge. As long as you leave out the mango smoothies and pizza, I promise to pay attention. Deal. Now that we're all here again, let's head back to the juice shop scoreboard and take a look at our next challenge, Login Vendor. The login vendor challenge is all about finding a way to log in as the specific user, vendor, without knowing the password. Just like with login admin, we're going to be testing for authentication vulnerabilities, but this time, the goal isn't just to bypass login but to impersonate this specific account. I guess this means we're doing more SQL injection, right? You got it. But this time, instead of just trying to get in as any user, we need to craft our attack so the database logs us in specifically as vendor. This sounds like fun, but how are we going to find vendors' login information? Hey, I remember seeing email addresses while I was looking at the product reviews. Maybe we can start there. Good idea. Well, I guess someone finally decided to pull up to the function. Did you just say pull up to the function? Let's start by using Burp Suite to capture the GET request for reviews and see what we can find. Okay, I found the request, and of course, it shows an email address in the response. But it's not vendor's email, so how's that gonna help us? Well, now we know that email addresses are included in review responses, so that's a great start. We just need a way to pull more of them automatically. Like by swapping out the product number in the request? Yes. That's exactly it. If we modify the product ID parameter, we can cycle through different products and collect more reviewer emails. If Bender left a review, his email should pop up eventually. So, we just keep swapping out product numbers and hope we stumble upon Bender's email? Pretty much. But we don't have to do it manually, Burp Suite can help automate the process. We'll send the request to Intruder and configure it to iterate through product numbers. If everything goes according to plan, we should find the email address we're looking for. So we're basically running an email scavenger hunt? You got it, pal. Now, just like last time from Intruder, let's clear any automatically assigned positions, as we only want to target the specific parameter we care about. Got it. I highlighted the number, clicked add, and now just like last time, it's our payload position. Nice job, Leah. Now for our payload settings, we'll be using a numbers list. Also, be sure to set the range from 1 to 50 to give us a decent spread. We might not hit anything right away, but this gives us a starting point. Also, don't forget to uncheck URL encode these characters, as we don't want Burp Suite messing with our payloads. Now, before we fire this off, 
Let's fine-tune the attack settings to extract any email addresses we might find. Oh, that sounds cool. How are we doing that? Glad you asked. Click on Settings, then under Grep Extract, click Add. This way, if Bender's email is hiding somewhere in the responses, Burp Suite will scoop it up for us instead of making us dig through every result manually. Now, you'll see the original response. Find and highlight only the email address, then click OK. That way, when we run the attack, Burp Suite will automatically show us any emails it finds. And now we start the attack? Not quite yet. Let's double check our payload positions, response extraction, and other settings. Once we're sure it's set up correctly, then we can start the attack. No sense in running it twice because we missed a checkbox. Okay, Mr. B, let's do this before this Tums wears off, and I have to make another emergency bathroom run. All right, hit start attack, and let's see if we can track down Bender's email. Hey, there it is. We got an email. Man, Intruder is really coming in handy. And this is just the beginning. Now that we have Bender's email, we're one step closer to logging in as him. So, what's next? Do we just try some obvious passwords, or is there a smarter way to go about this? Glad you asked. Since we're dealing with a SQL-based login, our goal is to manipulate the query the server runs. Normally, it checks if the email and password match a valid user. But with SQL injection, we can mess with that logic. So we trick it into thinking we're Bender, even though we have no idea what his password is? Exactly. We already know or one equals one works for admin, but here we need to be a little more specific. Since we have his email, we can tailor it to something like Bender at juice-sh.op, single quote, double dash. This works because the single quote closes the input, and the double dash tells the database to ignore everything after it. Basically, if the email matches Bender's, the system skips the password check altogether. Sounds like Bender would approve. All right, let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, let's do it. If it works, we should land straight into Bender's account. So again, bring up Burp Suite and your browser side by side. In your browser, navigate to the login page, and in Burp Suite, make sure intercept is on. We'll capture the request, inject our SQL payload, then forward the request back to the browser to see what happens. And wouldn't you know it? Just like that, we're in. Awesome work, everyone. We've only got one more challenge to go. And if I'm being honest, this is probably the toughest one we've faced yet. We haven't talked much about the Christmas special, but don't worry, if you apply everything we've learned so far, you'll be just fine. The goal here is to exploit a hidden vulnerability and purchase an item that doesn't appear in the product list. So, it exists in the system, but we just can't see it? Exactly. Our job is to figure out how to find it and successfully buy it. So where do we start? Good question. Since we'll be using SQL injection for this one, the first step is finding a solid injection point. Hey, maybe we can use the search request like we did for cross-site scripting? Way to use that brain of yours, my boy. The search bar is a great place to start. If the query behind it isn't properly sanitized, we might be able to inject some SQL and manipulate the results, just like we did with cross-site scripting, but this time, instead of injecting scripts, we'll inject database commands. If we can craft the right injection, we might be able to pull up hidden products, including the one we need for the challenge. So let's bring up Burp Suite, capture the search request, and send it to Repeater so we can see what we're dealing with. All right, done. But all I'm getting is a 304 not modified message. What the heck does that mean? Good question. A 304 not modified response means the server thinks you already have the most recent version of the page, so it doesn't bother sending it again. It's usually triggered by caching headers like if modified since or if none match. Since we're modifying requests anyway, let's remove the if none match header and resend it through repeater. Nice. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. The response is showing details for all the available products, but when I do a search for Christmas, nothing comes up. What should we do next? 
Let's start by keeping it simple. In the request line of the get request, add banana single quote, then send it through repeater. If the site throws a database error, that indicates it's vulnerable to SQL injection. So we're injecting single quote directly into the URL to see if it breaks? Correct, Amundo. The single quote might cause an issue with the SQL query if it's not properly sanitized. If it triggers an error, we know we're on the right track. And of course it worked. Junior wouldn't have had us try it otherwise. Now that we know the search query is vulnerable, let's craft an injection to start uncovering those hidden products. Let's try replacing banana single quote with single quote double parenthesis double dash. And why are we doing this exactly? Another great question. By doing this, we're essentially closing the current SQL query and commenting out the rest of it. The double parentheses close the current input, and the double dash tells the database to ignore anything after that. This manipulation can help us reveal data we wouldn't normally be able to access, like the Christmas special. It's a classic SQL injection trick. Holy moly, it worked. Looks like we have the full product list and found the Christmas special. What do we do next? Only one more thing to do, and that's by the Christmas special. And since we're already logged in as Bender, let's make ourselves at home and purchase the product as our good friend Bender himself. Okay, but how are we supposed to buy a product that technically doesn't exist? Hey, what about that post request we found during information gathering? Could we use that? Absolutely. Great suggestion, my boy. Let's head back to the juice shop and add any product to Bender's basket. Once that's done, capture the post request in Burp Suite under the proxy tool and send it to Repeater. Next, find the Christmas special ID in the get request we located earlier. Then, replace the product ID in the post request with the Christmas special ID, and when you're done, send it through Repeater. If everything works as expected, Bender's about to get a surprise holiday delivery. That is so freaking cool. The Christmas special is in Bender's basket. Let's check out and claim our victory. Congratulations, everyone. We've just conquered the Christmas special challenge, and with that, we've officially completed all three challenges we set out to defeat today. Take a bow. But don't get too comfortable. Next up, we'll be diving into security misconfigurations and broken anti-automation. Get ready, because things are about to get even more interesting. As always, we hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new today. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. But until then, remember, it's always cyber soul security, and we out. Oh,